end that big story that we're following for you just 15 days to the date of the repeat presidential poll. One candidate has pulled out of the race and another just got a chance at the ballot. This seems to complicate the race somewhat and that is why Okweti Omtata activist is seeking clarity on what should happen if the said repeat presidential election does not take place. This is what has unfolded today um, in court. Dr. Ekuru Alkot um, got the orders from Justice Mativo compelling the IEBC to gazette him as one of the presidential candidates on October the 26th. Following that, the IEBC has interpreted that ruling to now say all eight presidential candidates will be on the ballot, also noting that they have received the letter from Raila Odinga, but that he's yet to sign the statutory form 24A. Remember, there were eight presidential candidates, one of whom, Cyrus Shahalaka Huajirongo, has since been declared bankrupt. So just important for us to note that. I would like us to listen to uh, Dr. Ekuru Alkot. He continued to speak more about this ruling that came out, particularly faulting the IEBC for not interpreting the Supreme Court uh, verdict of 2017 correctly. Watch. Because we honestly believe that Chebukati had uh, completely violated uh, the Constitution by discriminating on my candidature um, and by misinterpreting it uh, to mean a runoff. So today the court has actually confirmed that he was very wrong. I believe that there are issues that must be addressed at IEBC, including uh, those individuals, the bad elements at IEBC, who may have bungled uh, the 8th August election. So we still strongly believe that we have a set of concerns that we will be raising with the IEBC. They are already... Yeah, so he's talking about uh, those issues that we had discussed with Elias Mutuma. Of course, uh, the issues that he will raise. We'll wait to hear what those specific issues are. Elias Mutuma, who's Dr. Ekuru Akot's lawyer, is still with me. Uh, Elias, my question to you then would be, because uh, you talked about the other candidates, saying they were not party to the Supreme Court petition, neither were they party to the suit that uh, you filed on behalf of your client. So what are you going to do about it? Anything? Uh well, uh, like I said, uh, the people who have been involved uh, in the fresh election, the eight other candidates, were not party to the Supreme Court decision. They were not party to the High Court decision. And uh, most of them have withdrawn. So the question would be now, uh, you include them in the ballot, then later, later they want to you know, withdraw from the race. What happens? You're creating a bigger crisis. In my view, IBC ought to have obeyed and enforced the order that was given by Mativo to the letter without overstretching itself to include uh, the other candidates. All right. Uh, I'd wonder what your thoughts would be on the amendments in Parliament and how these may affect uh, your client. They They've have no passed. effect whatsoever. Mm -hmm. uh, that's an exercise in futility. Number one, we're in the middle of an election. We are still being governed by some set of laws which were existing. And uh, remember that, uh, like uh, Justice uh, Maraga said, an election is not an event, it's a process. And for it to be completed, you must apply those laws from the very beginning to the end. So if you have a process that commenced with nominations based on one set of rules, where if you have um, you know, gazettement of uh, candidates based on one set of rules, if you have you know, appointment of agents governed by one set of rules, then in the middle you're saying, we've now amend amended the law and we want to include new terms. W what happens? And there's uh, a very uh, you know, clear uh, principle of law that you cannot apply laws retrospectively. So how is it that now you will remember that as we speak, we only have a bill which has been passed by parliament. It is yet to be assented to, so it has not even uh, come to force. So if you, for example, who was to assent to it tomorrow, how would it affect a situation that has happened today? That, in law, is not uh, applicable at all. So they, they are inconsequential, on, 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 according to me. All right. Activist Okoiti Omtata has also gone to court today um, and uh, he's seeking to, to have some sort of interpretation of what happens in the event uh, a candidate withdraws. Now, granted, um, this was 
off the back of what happened yesterday with Raila Odinga, who's the NASA presidential candidate, pulling out of the race or vacating his candidature, um, according to his statement. Uh, and Omtata saying, you know, there's a lacuna in the law. That may have been overtaken by events at the moment, um, considering now Ikura Akot is on the ballot. We've got two presidential candidates. But what are your thoughts on that, including the fact that he wants the formation of a caretaker government um, at this point in time when it seems that there's, uh, I mean, you know, we're in a state of flux as, as regards uh, the interpretation of the law. The, the truth of the matter is that we were heading for a very serious constitutional crisis if Raila was to withdraw like he did yesterday and we do not have any other candidate or for one reason or the other, we do not have election, not even because one candidate has withdrawn, but because of some unforeseen circumstances that we do not have election within the 60 days. The law is very silent. So I think it's uh, within uh, Omtata's right to seek that clarification and interpretation from court because it's, it's a lacuna that needs to be addressed. But, but like you know, the constitution cannot be you know, prescriptive to all scenarios that, uh, uh, you know, uh, that should happen under the sun. So I think... Um, it's good for him to seek that clarification. And uh, the good thing is that uh, we have a pretty new constitution that we are now putting to test through you know, actual scenarios. And we realize that we in this scenario, the constitution has not provided for this scenario. So what do we do? We go back to the constitutional court for clarification or for an opinion on that matter. So I think it is within his right. And uh, it, is, it is welcome at this juncture because we were heading there without knowing what solution was viable to anyone. All right, and what are your thoughts on a caretaker government? We've seen uh, what uh, the Attorney General um, has said, that there is, there is no such institution in our laws, in our constitution anywhere. But like you said, uh, the constitution perhaps uh, cannot uh, cater for anything under the sun. And I suppose that's why they say it's a living document and it's one that uh, we continue to work on day by day as we continue to discover uh, certain blind spots of the Constitution. Uh, but what would your thoughts be, like you said, perhaps seeking clarity on should we ever find ourselves in a situation such as this once more? Um, what are your thoughts on a caretaker government? Pardon, I, I'm not sure I got that, Yvonne. Uh, your thoughts on a caretaker government? The Attorney General says it has no place. There is no such wording anywhere in our laws. Um, but is it time that perhaps our Constitution started to moot the idea of a caretaker government if we ever found ourselves in a situation like this before again? I, I'm, I'm still not getting you, Yvonne. Sorry. All right, okay. Well, I think there's a problem with... All right, we will work on our sound in just a moment uh, and make sure we get your views on that. Um, let's just, in the meanwhile, uh, continue to update you on the latest events. Let's just fix Elias Mutuma's sound uh, right away and we will definitely uh, get back to you on that. So let's remind you of what's just happened today. The IBC saying Raila Odinga is yet to submit Form 24A, supporting his decision to withdraw uh, from that presidential election up until yesterday, when Raila Odinga um, had withdrawn from the case, the, the constitutional lacuna, if you like, was whether we would have an election on the 26th of October or not, seeing as we had just one presidential candidate. But now it seems we don't just have two after uh, Dr. Ekuru Okot was um, allowed to by Justice Mativo's ruling, but now the IEBC opening the floodgates once again and saying the other eight will also, the other seven rather, uh, will also be on the ballot. All of this bearing in mind that one candidate has since been declared bankrupt. Today we heard from Jafet Kaluyu Kavinga um, and Mohamed Abdu Badida both saying they will be on the ballot. We're yet to hear uh, some declarations from uh, Cyrus Shahalahua Jirongo as well as Professor Michael Wainaina. We'll wait to see what happens there. All this meanwhile, uh, Orengo today saying um, that uh, the meetings will continue every day. The meetings they're having at Uhuru Park. Uh, we wait to see what happens with um, them having vacated their candidature. Uh, what happens now? I think this is uh, the question that everybody is seeking. I know uh, uh, quite a bit we had from uh, Dr. Ekuru Aukot uh, a little earlier. Let's listen to him once more. So we'd like to hear from Dr. Ekuru Akot once more. He had quite a bit to say um, after the ruling today.
to this very day to conclusively prosecute election officials who either mismanage or intentionally bungle elections has been a big gap in reforming the electoral management body. And we All right, so we're still here with uh, Elias Mutuma. Um, so, Elias, uh, before we had our little technical issue, uh, my question to you was your thoughts on a caretaker government uh, that is being fronted by Okoitium Tata. You just said uh, that the Constitution perhaps did not anticipate every crisis we may have, but I just want to know your thoughts on that. In the event we ever find ourselves in a situation like this again in future. Well, uh, Yvonne, uh President Uhuru at the moment is enjoying what we call incumbency powers, uh, pending the uh, you know, uh, election of the new president. And the constitution is silent on how long he should exercise such powers. So to me, as long as the electoral process is ongoing, President Uhuru will continue to exercise the incumbency powers until we have a new president sworn in. So the issue of uh, creating a caretaker government is not based in the constitution. It is only applicable where we have a sitting president who has either died and the deputy is not available or is not um, you know, present or also died, or where they have resigned, or where there is a crisis that has caused the incapacitation of the president. But um, the, the law does not envisage a caretaker government when we have an electoral process that is ongoing. So it is not an issue at the moment. All right, so do you think we've now averted uh, any crisis by Justice Mativo's ruling today and by Dr. Okot now being on the ballot? Because there was a lot of apprehension in the country about whether we were facing a legal crisis, a political crisis that would require political actors to sit down and come up with some sort of arrangement. Do you think that crisis has now been averted and we've crossed that bridge? Absolutely. Before today, we were in that crisis because um, uh, Raila Odinga had withdrawn from the race, meaning we did not have a contest. And because the IBC had purported this to be a runoff, and the, the basis of that runoff was number one and number two, if one of them withdraws, that means we do not go for a runoff. Now, uh, with this judgment, it means that uh, we are not going for a runoff and there is no crisis because if Raila withdraws, if um, uh, he does not participate in this election, then we still going to have you know, a competition, a competition between Uhuru Kenyatta and the Kurwa court. So we are out of the woods at the moment because of that judgment as, that was delivered by uh, Justice Mativo. All right, I'd like your thoughts now because uh, one of the candidates, and, and we understand it is perhaps not automatic, but being a lawyer, perhaps you can uh, explain some of those issues to us um, about one candidate being declared bankrupt. What would be the process in terms of, uh, you know, trying to make sure that uh, uh, will he be on the ballot? What do you think IBC's interpretation of this should be? And that's why I'm saying IBC again is wrong in including all the candidates in this election because a lot has changed. We have one of the candidates who has been declared a bankrupt and the law does not permit anyone who has been declared bankrupt to participate in an election or someone who is insane or someone who has been charged with a criminal offense. So now that they're including someone who has been declared bankrupt, I mean, what would the effect be? It would mean that this election is also liable to be challenged on that basis. That's what I'm saying. The, the IBC has been messing up uh, from the very beginning. They, you know, drew us in this uh, crisis. They still want to throw us in another crisis by, you know, just blindly and overstretching themselves to include all the other candidates without even vetting, without even consulting those candidates to hear whether they still want to remain in the race or not. To me, right. I, I, I thought the best thing would have been at least for IBC to try and consult some of these candidates to know whether they still are interested in the race or not. But just including them uh, anyhow might, uh -huh you know, bring the issue of eligibility All right. to be a candidate in the election. Okay, thank you. Elias Mutuma, counsel for Dr. Ekuru Aokot, who's the Third Way Alliance presidential candidate. Thank you very much for your time tonight. I want to switch now very quickly to Okoiti Omtata, who joins me now from our city center studios. It's good to speak with you, Okia. Um, I would first like to start by asking you whether you think your petition is overtaken by events now that Ekuru Aokot has been um, allowed to run by the High Court. My petition is not overtaken by events because 
it has got no capacity to it has got no capacity to res, to resurrect whatever happened in the high court today cannot resurrect what happened yesterday if Raila Odinga had withdrawn today after the high court had given its verdict then you could say that a cruel court can be on the ballot but because Raila Odinga withdrew yesterday the law as it stood yesterday was that with Raila Odinga withdrawing the elections collapsed and therefore they cannot be revived by, but through the back door to via what the, what the High Court did today. So what the High Court did today is for the future. What happened yesterday is cast in stone. It cannot be changed. We, we automatically switched to Article 138 yesterday and there's no way of switching back to Article 40. All right, but to be fair... Or Article 140, Clause 3. To be fair, Okia, uh, IBC says he has not formally withdrawn his candidature. He has not signed the statutory form 24A. Anything could happen. He could rescind that decision. The issue is that uh, Raila Odinga wrote to the IBC and stated he's not participating in the elections. At the point of withdrawing, not the formalities, the fact that he withdrew and the fact that he has put it in writing does it have to be in a form? Means that he, has with, he withdrew yesterday, the elections collapsed yesterday, and what the High Court did today cannot revive what happened yesterday. The law cannot be ap applied retro uh, retrospectively. This law can only be applied beginning today when the High Court rendered the verdict going forward. But for the elections of 26th of, uh, 26th of uh, October, they are dead, there are no elections. All Unless right. we want to be to begin to, to behave like we don't have we don't have the uh, law in this country, to okay. me they are dead. All right, so that's an interesting interpretation. And I need to urge that that the court cannot be included in the ballot or, or any of the other people. Okay, that's interesting. I'd like us to also explore uh, the caretaker government that you are proposing uh, for in your petition in your prayers to the court. Well, this would sound more like the rhetoric we've been hearing from political actors like NASA, for example. My question to you would be, how would a court start to um, establish an institution that even Kenya's attorney general says does not exist in law in our country? Um, would you perhaps have sought this through a political mediation exercise rather than going to the courts? First of all, Kenya's attorney general have discharged, distinguished himself as a person who is not an authority in the law. He has, uh, he has abandoned his capacity to present the law as it is for purposes of advancing a political agenda. And I don't blame him because the Attorney General today is just like a cabinet minister. So there's no difference between Attorney General, the Honorable Attorney General and Mr. Matiangi. They serve at the pleasure of the president, so they do what the president wants. But the fact of the matter is that there's a very clear line in the Constitution which can lead us to where, where I'm asking the court to take us. And it's very clear, and I've stated it in my petition, and I'll be urging it, and I'll be able to demonstrate, and I, I hope I'll persuade the courts to say that it's possible to declare a caretaker government where the country has reached and to get us back from the precipice and to put the country back on the firm ground where we need to be. All right, be that as it may, then... Broad, broad-based consensus and carry out reforms. All right, I, I wonder if you've, um, you know perhaps envisioned this further than that. If your prayers are answered uh, by the court, what's your idea of the duration of this caretaker government? Who would be in it? Um, and then what would happen thereafter, after the duration of it is done? Do we go back to an election? I I'm wondering if you've envisioned this uh, it is a, that far. It is a caretaker government for 60 days. Uh -huh. A caretaker government for 60 days until it, its mandate would expire on the 17th of December 2017. Within which time we, we hope that the IBC would have been reformed and would have carried out credible elections that, are, that have the confidence of all the players and that accord to the requirements of the Constitution. As, uh, because in Kenya, you know, the problem you're having is that after Krigler came into this country, we moved away from the concept of free and fair elections, which Jubilee is still urging, and we entered the, uh, the, the dispensation of tamper-proof elections. And tamper-proof elections are scientific, are, uh, and this is, that's why we are talking about the issues like verifiable, simple, 
accurate and stuff and those kind of adjectives. Those are not ad idle ad adjectives. They are mathematical adjectives, they are uh, scientific adjectives, and they refer to our, they require an election in Kenya that is not tamper proof. We should not be able to tamper with our electoral process. And that's why we are going the way we are going. And the only reason why we were able to demonstrate that the last elections had been tampered with was because the gadgets we are using are able to tell, to leave a, a trail of what has happened. So even if you, if you program them to do something, they say we are programmed to do this and that. And the beauty about technology is that technology never fails. And technology has never failed anywhere in the world, except when it encounters either ignorance, incompetence, or sabotage. Okay. And I'll tell you that the technology is not working in this country because of sabotage. We All have right. the competence, but there is sabotage, the lack of political will. And that's why okay. we need a caretaker government uh -huh. to give us the kind of political will we need to be able to put in place a tamper-proof electoral system All right. that will then deliver an election that accords with the constitution of Kenya. Okay. Anything less than that is not a all right. It's not okay. Under okay. The constitution. Uh, okay. So this is just a clarification from you. You have uh, um, not been able to get them to have a temporary injunction on the IEBC towards declaring uh, Uhuru president, but you have gotten a certificate of urgency. When will this be heard? Well, the, I didn't appear before the judge. The judge looked at the petition in chambers and directed that I will appear with, before him with the other parties on, on Tuesday, the 17th. Okay. But he certified the matter as very urgent, uh -huh. and we will meet him on Tuesday, the 17th. All right, okay, thank and you very much. the thing is that the same judge who rendered the verdict all right, thank you very much for that. Uh, Okia Omtata, I wish we had more time. Uh, my apologies for that. It's the traffic uh, situation within the city of Nairobi, but thank you for making the time for us nonetheless. Okia Omtata going to court, seeking the formation of a caretaker government. He insists that despite Justice Mativo's ruling today, that that has no effect on the events that took place yesterday when Raila Odinga withdrew his candidature from the October 26th repeat presidential poll, and he insists that we continue to be in a constitutional crisis. Elias Mutuma, who's Dr. Kura Okot's lawyer, says, well, you know, the others shouldn't have been allowed onto this one. They're joyriding. And that Justice Mativo's uh, orders were very specific as to compel the IEBC to include just one candidate in the October 26th election. That is a big story that continues to unfold. It's a cookie that's crumbling. And indeed, in many ways, we'll continue to interpret that as we head towards the election, which is now just 15 days away. My thanks to my guests and to you as well. Uh, remember to keep this conversation going. It is a big story. We'll continue to follow right here on KTN News, where you get the whole story. It'll continue with that coverage on KTN Prime, which is up next. I'm Yvonne Okwara Matole. Good night.